Hey guys and welcome back. Today we are looking at another Tiger II, this time by Fujimi. And this is in 176 scale as opposed to 172, so just be aware of that. Now you may have noticed in some of the other Tiger uh, Tiger II videos that I've done, uh, I do actually already possess a Fujimi Tiger II. Um, but that was one I did, I'd say, in the very early weeks of my return to model making back in the mid-90s and uh, it was repainted and it's that's a bit of a mess but I still like it I'm fond of it so I haven't really changed it so I decided what I would do is a company in rapid fire which is what I play is three tanks so I said I'd get another Fujimi um, and I've had this one quite a while uh, and I'll get an airfix one because the airfix is 176 also that way my company will have three tanks which are in 176 scale so there'll be no uh, kind of scale discrepancies on the war games table so that's the reasoning behind this. So here we are looking at the uh, artwork, which I think is quite cool. Now, I think there was an older version of this artwork, which had kind of more going on in the background. Um, so uh, this is, I'm not sure what uh, year this is from. I got it a while back, and it was probably an old kit at the time anyway. But uh, as you can see, it shows a uh, tank officer or whatever uh, letting rip with an MG42, it looks like. Uh, because you have the uh, area here on the barrel bar be removed as opposed to an MG34, although I think it was, should have been an MG34 anyway, I don't know, that's uh, debatable. Uh, it doesn't seem to be any, any uh, gun in the front here, which is strange enough, and there's a guy lying down here uh, with a Panzerfaust who looks actually cross-eyed, but anyway. Um, the uh, figure which you do, which does come with the kit, uh, does not interact with a gun, nor is there a gun with it, strangely enough, but anyway, that's just... Uh, a little oddity of the artwork in comparison to the contents. Uh, side of the box, just a reproduction of that really gives you some information with regards colours there. Uh, unfortunately that is in Japanese or Chinese or something so I can't read that. Um, and that's basically it on the side of the box here. Just rotate that. Uh, similar kind of warnings, you know, the usual kind of stuff. Uh, don't, I don't know, what's that? I don't understand what that means. Uh, don't set fire to yourself, don't take acid, and probably do not try and fire giant laser, laser rays through the planet. I don't know. Um, so anyway, um, that's basically the box. So anyway, enough of that. Let's have a look at the instructions. Again, um, fairly basic uh, Fujimi-style instructions. Comes with uh, a load of uh, a script I don't understand, which is unfortunate, but there you go. I actually did study Japanese once for a couple of months, and yeah, that didn't work out. Uh, again, what I do like is um, the fact that the sprue is broken down here, so you can kind of check to see if there's anything missing. That's great. I actually really like it when a brand does that. Uh, here you have some um, color uh, listings, and again, online you can find out all about that uh, and get conversions and so on and so forth. Marking and painting. Yep, quite straightforward. On the back, then, uh, the actual assembly instructions. This is uh, fairly straightforward, to be fair, to be, to be frank. Um, lower hull pieces go together, wheels go on, just make sure you do them in the right order. Uh, exhaust bits and pieces, um, and the tracks, I normally glue those with super glue or Loctite or something like that. You can heat them if you wish, but I prefer to uh, actually use the glue. Various bits and pieces that go on the top of the, uh, the hull assembly. Uh, gives you the option of leaving uh, the uh, driver or the MG position open there to put a crewman in, which I may or may not do. I generally don't do, but maybe I'll give it a shot one of these one of these days. Uh, and then you have your uh, turret and so on and so forth. The bits and pieces that go together and it just slots onto that. And there you have your tank. And that's it. Straightforward enough. No bother. So that's the instructions. All right. Let's have a look at the decals. Um, still in the packet. What I love about this is the fact that you get a multitude of numbers um, and markings, divisional markings and so on and so forth. This is brilliant. Um, you get uh, three Balkan Cruiser in the uh, black and white and three in the sort of, uh, I can't remember what the expression is, but anyway, sort of just the white uh, outline marking, which is pretty nice. Uh, and then uh, several uh, kind of unit uh, or divisional markings there, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, top marks to Fujimi for that. Well done. That is very very nice. That is that is a gift to a model maker because uh, it's great to have the old excess excess numbers there because obviously you just use two or three or whatever for the tank itself and you have a multitude left over. So that is absolutely great. Let's have a look at the tracks. The tracks uh, very uh, easy kind of polyurethane rubbery sort of uh, tracks. Um, very easy to manipulate. No problem there. I mean these are old. This I'd say this kit. 
and I mean, how long the kid's actually in production and manufacture, but this kid, I'd say, is at least 10 to 20 years old. Um, and this is, I have it a while in the attic, so, but there you go. But, um, and again, uh, yeah, it looked pretty good. Um, kind of, even when it's folded over, it looks pretty accurate to the uh, Tiger thread marks, tar tar tank, uh, track marks. Um, so, it's no major issue there, um, and should be easy to operate and paint up. Uh, that's those guys. Uh, upper hull section. Nice bit of detail, uh, fairly straightforward as I always say. No zimmers, unfortunately, but there you go. Um, but yeah, nice little, uh, little rendition of the hull. Then you have your side skirts and your uh, floor section. A lot going on there, not sure how accurate that is, um, but hey, uh, there you go. Some oversized rivets and so on and so forth. But look at the underneath the tank, why they even bothered, <laughs> I don't know, but right, there you go. Uh, nice to see the effort, I suppose. Uh, here we have the uh, the uh, turret, uh, which isn't too bad, and uh, gives you the option of having uh, either section open there, although I probably won't in this regard. Um, and uh, yeah, pretty good. Uh, just size wise, nice. Locks in the little rear door there. Okay, yep, pretty good. And uh, then you have the turret ring. Now this just sits down onto the uh, upper hull section. It doesn't lock in place, unfortunately, which is fine. But uh, I prefer when they have the lugs at the side there, but that's uh, quite acceptable too. Uh, the kind of spigot ones really annoy me because uh, you can kind of break them, put them back in or something. Uh, sides there for the, uh, the wheels to go on, nice little bit of detail in there, that'll come up well, no bother. Uh, wheels themselves, a little bit of detail on those, looks pretty good, can't really fault that. And uh, yeah, just make sure you put them on in the right order, otherwise you'll have a bit of a nightmare. But it's uh, it's actually straightforward enough, to be honest. Uh, no real detail on the back of those road wheels. Uh, a little bit there, but not much. Um, and then over here, we have the gun. Yes, the old 88 millimeter gun. And you have this guy, the tank commander, with the it's actually a leather jacket. Uh, got binoculars on and so forth. Um, I've used this guy in something else before, can't remember what. Um, but I won't be using him in the tank. I have enough of commanders poking out of my, my Tiger tanks at the minute, so I'll probably use him for something else. Um, but that's it. Nice little bit of detail there in those. Um, nothing excessive now, it has to be said, but this is 172 scale. And bear in mind that I'm uh, looking at this from a War Games perspective rather than what I term a shelf model. If it was a shelf model, I'd be looking for a little bit more detail and... Uh, I'd be doing a bit of a better paint job as well, I'd imagine. But anyway, um, so that's it. That's the uh, the final sprue. So that is the Fujimi uh, Tiger II. And I will be doing, as I said, several other Tiger IIs. Because um, I complete this battalion, there's roughly 10 tanks in the battalion. So I have about four kits to put, put together. The Fujimi and Airfixes, Vesda and uh, a Dragon. Um, so... Uh, I'm going to crack on with this and I'll be right back to you in a moment with the painted, uh, completed and painted example and as per usual the old traditional size comparison to see how they marry up to other brands. So that's it guys, talk to you in a moment. Hey guys and welcome back to part 2 of this video on uh, the Tiger 2 by uh, Fujimi in 176 scale, sometimes known as the Tiger B, Koenig's Tiger, etc, etc, etc. So, uh, this particular one, as we mentioned earlier, is the uh, Henschel variant, uh, or the production type, uh, so there would have been more of these produced than the Porsche, or probably more correctly termed, uh, prototype uh, version, uh, the difference basically being the turret. Uh, and the gun a little bit. Um, so anyway, that's that. Uh, the model itself, 176 scale, very very simple, very easy to put together, it takes all of about 15-20 minutes, uh, then obviously painting uh, and off you go. Um, no real frills, uh, nothing fancy with it, uh, doesn't come with any accessories as regards towing cables or extra track links or anything like that. Um, and basically it's, you know, if you've got a few bits in the spares box, uh, you can dress it up, which uh, I'm kind of in the middle of doing at the moment. I'm kind of testing out those tracks to see how I like them there, but um, we'll see how that goes. I'm probably going to take them off and replace them with uh, a little bit of spare uh, cabling from the uh, Airfix kit. Um, the Airfix kit itself is in 176 as well, the Tiger 2, which is the prototype version, uh, or the Porsche version if you wish. Um, 
and uh, in fairness it would look nice to have uh, two or three of these and one of those as well to make up a, uh, a company for rapid fire purposes which is what I, uh, I, I play rapid fire so there you go. Um, as I say tank itself, uh, Tiger II classic piece of German armour, World War II, uh, real favoured uh, piece in the modelling community, um, iconic piece really to be honest with you um, and just a lovely little kit to put together, very very simple, very straightforward, uh, vinyl tracks uh, to be honest with you because they're kind of uh, hidden beneath that um, track guard there um, I just cut them um, so the uh, the track only extends about a, a centimeter or so uh, to either side uh, it was just uh, handier for me to do it that way and uh, off you go um, you know there's not much more you can say about it it's it's a really simple piece detail it's in fairness it, isn't actually bad for what it is. Uh, the engine deck is quite nice. Um, you know, a few little raised bits and pieces. Uh, they'll come up well if you're dry brushing or whatever it is you're doing. As I say, I just use uh, Humbrol colours. Uh, I think it was 75 or something for the green. Uh, 113 for the uh, the the um, the 113 was the brown, the dark brown. And uh, I think it's 63 or 64 or whatever it is for the uh, lighter colour there, the uh, kind of brown here. Uh, Kind of almost dunk a gill but not quite um, kind of a beige colour um, and that was really it and then of course the, the little dots are the uh, the lighter colour uh, just replicated on the camouflage stripes um, and that's it. The, cam the pattern itself is kind of based on an old uh, pattern that was given with uh, Ravel many many years ago uh, for their uh, Panther I think maybe or maybe it was their Tiger 2 I can't recollect it so long ago um, but at the end of the day, a uh, nice little kit and I can't really fault it other than the fact that it doesn't come with much in the line of accessories really. Um, as I say, no towing cables, all the kind of stuff that you'd expect to find on the side of a uh, Tiger 2, it just doesn't, doesn't come with them. <laughs> so you can get some aftermarket stuff or stuff out of the spares box. As I say, I have an Airfix review coming up, so I'm going to rob probably one of the towing cables and put it on one of the sides and see how it goes. So basically, these track lengths that I've put here and here are actually from uh, the Plastic Soldier Company Panther but they slot in quite nicely um, so I might use utilize them a little bit put a couple of jerry cans on the other side there um, solely for the reason of having something to, to put there and another little spare piece of track length there I normally don't put uh, the kind of the full complement of four pieces of track on uh, each side of the turret because I just think it looks a bit more used and a bit more you know, authentic and genuine to have one or two of those missing because uh, you can presume that they've probably lost the track length somewhere along the line but anyway that's that um, I had done one before, uh, which you've probably seen in one or two of the other videos if you've been watching them, um, because the Fujimi Tiger II was the first ever Tiger II that uh, I built back in the 90s. And as you can see there, there it is. It's a little bit worn, a little bit battered. It's been dropped, it's been stood on. Um, it's been in combat, essentially, for the last 20 or 25 years. <laughs> so from that perspective, uh, you know, yeah, it's, 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 it's seen, some, seen some stuff. Um, it's been repainted at least once maybe even twice I don't know um, so the details lost a small little bit on it but it's a lovely little tank and I'm very fond of it as I say um, and again they are on 176 so the Airfix one will match in nicely with that I hope when I do the Airfix uh, kit in the next uh, couple of weeks I will do of course a size comparison but speaking of size comparison let's have a little look uh, at how they com uh, the Fujimi one compares to uh, the 172 guys which are probably more um, more commonplace really um, these days anyway um, I think myself the true uh, kind of uh, you know the litmus test one is how it compares to the Revel Tiger 2 which I think myself is probably one of the best uh, kind of standard pieces out there as regards uh, the Tiger 2 in 172 scale having said that I do have a Dragon model to put together in the next couple of weeks as well so we'll see how that uh, transpires as well and his Vesda uh, the Vez Vesda looks a little bit clunky and chunky but we'll see Sure, I look a bit clunky and chunky myself? How bad? Anyway, uh, so what we got here is, if I can just get them kind of lined up back to back so that there's a, you know, some kind of a little bit of standardization there. Um, move the tripod and hope it doesn't fall apart. Here we go. Yeah, so you can see there that the uh, the 172 scale uh, models, they are obviously bigger. Um, they are, I suppose, roughly half a centimeter um, in length and nearly the same in width. Uh, not a huge notable difference in the turret size. Um, I suppose it is noticeable, but it's not huge. Uh, gun barrel length, uh, see if I can just move that a little bit. Uh, there's a fraction in it, but not much. Uh, on the tabletop, will it matter a lot? 
in the heat of battle <laughs> probably not uh, especially with a few beers or a glass of wine you know there you go um, so from that perspective I think the Fujimi one is a bit of a winner it's a nice handy cheap simple to put together kit and you know I'm just kind of fond of it anyway um, but that's that uh, as regards to the paint colours as I said uh, Humbrol uh, enamels if I was doing it again I'd probably go for a colour that was closer to this a true Dunkel Gelb this is uh, the Augustini it's already factory sprayed but uh, that's probably the base colour I would use uh, if I were doing this again and I have a few other projects coming up in the next few months Panzer IVs a few bits and pieces other German armour so I probably will go for something like this um, so that kind of explains my weird colour uh, this was the original colour uh, that was used um, back in 90, I don't even want to think about how long ago that was, uh, and that was Humbrol 63. This is also Humbrol 63, and it's amazing to see how dark that colour has become over the years as regards the shade differences from the factory itself. That tin of Humbrol would have been used uh, back about 95, 96 to paint that model. or It was very close to when that model was released. I can't remember exactly how long ago it was, but I had it within a month of its release. Um, and I bought the tin of paint, obviously, because it recommended whatever colour it was, and that's what I rock and rolled with. Um, but again, keeping in, in the pattern, um, I've discovered that some of the uh, lighter colours in it get very dark, or certainly more noticeably dark, uh, within the Humbrol range going forward over the years. Not all of them, but one or two of them, that one is one in particular. So that's kind of it guys, that's the review of the uh, Fujimi 176 scale Tiger 2. We have a couple of other Tiger 2s to do, the Airfix as I mentioned, the Dragon and the Zvezda, which I have to tackle this evening, I have it partially built at the moment. Um, so that's kind of it guys, uh, if you'd like and subscribe and share and all that uh, internet business that goes beyond me, uh, that'd be great. Uh, we're gone over the 200 subscriber mark at the moment, uh, which I quite simply never thought would happen. I was literally just putting up videos for guys like me who were, you know, in their forties as it is now and like the models and like building and really like wargaming but like myself don't have an awful lot of skill as regards the paint side of things or are traditionalists and stick with the old hairy stick and enamel paints or whatever and you know, that's basically my take on it. Like at the end of the day if you're uh, if you like your models, you like your building, you like your painting, it doesn't have to be a masterpiece. You know, I mean mine certainly aren't so and the way I look at it is rock and roll, make yourself happy, build your tanks, build your planes, build your put your soldiers together, play your war games, put them on the shelf, whatever it is you do. You know, if you get a kick out of it, you know, it's good. It's good for your mental health, it's good for everything, it's just cool. Uh, so that's it, guys. Uh, that's my philosophy, anyway, <laughs> for what it is. Uh, so, uh, Fujimi, German heavy tank, Tiger II, uh, or Koenig's Tiger, Tiger B, blah, 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 etc., etc., in 176 scale. Hope you enjoyed the review, guys, and we will see you again very, very soon. Like and subscribe, etc., etc., and thank you if you've already done so. Take care, talk to you then.